recommended by, what's his name, Chris Hipkins. <laughs> there was a little heckling. Head outside, I mean, have people been receptive? Yeah, so, well, yeah, other than him. Um, yeah, uh, so far, so good. And an unhappy voter. You need to move on. I can stand here and talk to you. No, you can't. Why can't I? Okay. Where's the bloody notice to say I can't talk to the Prime Minister? So it's on the terms and conditions of entry into the, into the No, event. it's not. Yes, it is. He didn't get to have his chat to the PM. There was nothing like the reception for Jacinda Ardern last year. Go home, no one likes you here. You go home. By and large, I think the, the people here are passionate about what they do and they want to talk about what they're doing, and um, I'm, I'm all ears. I'm keen to hear about it. Field Days is a prime rural voter opportunity, and Nationals' Chris Luxon was busy spreading the blue word. Oh. Oh, sorry, just stop. What was the score? 2-1. Yeah. <laughs> oh, people are always very friendly, yeah. They're, they're, I get well treated around the country. It's nice. Good, thank you. How are you, sir? Maybe because National promised to delay making farmers pay for methane emissions by another five years. Did you do that? In a sort of cynical way? No, not at all. When you actually go impose a emissions pricing regime uh, without an ability for farmers to actually, you know, uh, reduce their own emissions, the risk is that you end up moving that production that feeds 40 million people around the world yeah. offshore to other places. So you make greenhouse gas emissions worse, and you destroy the New Zealand but economy and make Kiwis poorer. Are you absolutely sure that we're going to have the technology to stay with those emissions targets, say in 2030, yeah. not 2050, 2030? Yeah. So like when I talk to the sector, you know, it's quite uh, they feel very confident about their ability to deliver on the methane targets for 2030. Yeah. They're on the right track. Is that the key thing that? May decide the rural vote for you. Oh, well, we've we've been really clear that you know we do need to be pricing emissions in the um, primary sector. Um, we think that a partnership approach is the way that we do that. The Hawaka Ekenoa is about bringing all of the players together and designing a system that works. We don't want to defer that for you know potentially another decade, which seems yeah. to be what the National Party are proposing. Um, I just I just don't think there's any leadership in that at all. Sometimes your role as political leaders is to lead, and I don't think they're showing any leadership in the climate change space. Well, thanks thanks so much. Much. Good luck. But that partnership with farmers, Hiwaka Ekonoa, is on shaky ground. It did have bipartisan support until National pulled out. Labor is still trying to seal the deal. Yeah, the economy's pretty well knackered, really. But, um, so you're getting run by a bunch of twits. We've just taken on a big share milking job, and if they did bring that out, it could put us under. Well, I wouldn't be voting Labour either. I mean, they just, um, they could piss me off, actually. Like, like they say, they say, say a few things. I mean, they can't even fix our rates for a start. There is a different and not very popular view. I think we'd be stupid to change. Really? Yeah. A lot of people here seem to differ. Oh, yeah, that's you fine. Say, yeah. I don't mind. I yeah. don't mind. Yeah, I, but I think the thing is that um, National is promising things, but in the past they haven't really worked through for the whole of the country. It may work for them, but not the whole of the country. But Nationals' rural vote could be split. Not with Labour, but with ACT. And yet we're being treated like this. The smaller opposition party sensing a prime opportunity. If you had any doubt that ACT was after the farming and the rural vote this election, you just have to look at the size of the billboard. There it is. I mean, look at that thing. They also brought their campaign bus and a list of issues. I think most people are worried about it, including Mary, of which I am not, but I am not racist, or most people are not, but, you know, most people now have a serious issue with the co governance Here are the farmer. It was a comfortable home crowd for the new ACT candidate, ex-Federated Farmers President Andrew Hoggard. The question I keep getting asked all the time is, um, why have I chucked in a good-paying job at Feds? And, uh, not that it was, but... <laughs> He explains their emissions policy in simple terms. Our policy is if the rest of the world is going to do stuff, we will do likewise. But the rest of the world, they're focused on doing stuff that supports their farmers. No other country is focused on how can we penalise our farmers. So you want us to be a follower, not a leader in terms of this? I don't see... We're already a leader, though. We have the lowest emissions footprint in the world. We don't need to go and tax our farmers when countries that have lower foot, um, higher footprints than us aren't even considering it. They're only looking at helping their farmers. When it comes to ACT, Chris Luxon will not be put off message. How much are they going to eat into the possible farming vote for you? Well, I mean, I'm not really that hung up on it, and it sounds odd to say that, but yeah. I mean, I'm not, because... I've got the biggest billboard here, by the way. <laughs> but, but I mean, it's, it's really about the fact that we're thinking about agriculture. We want it to be hugely successful for the next 50 years. We know it can be. See you later.
This wouldn't be a complete agricultural roundup without the Greens. It's the ninth time James Shaw has been here and there's always a conversation to be had, this time about coal. The emissions from that can be zero, but, Not, we, but we don't seem to want to do that. No, it's because there's a much cheaper form of electricity. But there's not at the moment, is no, there? No, there is. But with National's emissions policy seemingly popular, James Shaw is surprisingly upbeat. The people who I talk to who are involved in the industry here would much rather have, we, we, uh, much rather that there was some kind of bipartisan consensus so that they had some sort of certainty or predictability no matter who's in government. And that leads us back to uncertainty over emissions and Labor's chances. I'm hopeful that we can you know, continue to make progress. I think there is still a commitment uh, to, uh, to, to making progress and you know, if, we'll, we'll keep working on that. And uncertainty for this wet and whiny country. And do you regret using those words that you used earlier this week of wet and whiny? And oh, I think the Labour government's incredibly wet and whiny. Yeah, I know, and I think it blames everyone but itself it for very it poor performance. It seemed to be that and you're talking any, about all of New Zealand. Any, no, and it was, I said I'm here to get our mojo back was the end of that sentence as well. And that's what I'm here to do.